Hello friends, welcome to the first session for the series tutorials page object model. Today in this session, we are going to see what is page object model, why to use page object model and how to implement page object model. So let's get started. Okay, page object model. So page object model is nothing but a design pattern. Okay, it is a design pattern. It's not a framework guys. Okay, uh, it's also known as POM. Okay, now one thing I want to address here is that we get one file called pom.xml right when we are working with the maven project now what happens like uh, uh, I, I have seen like most of the time when i have taken the interviews so there are some people like who are confused with this like the page object model design pattern and with this pom.xml file see page object model is a design pattern which has nothing to do with this pom.xml file okay again what does selenium documentation says about the page object model okay so page object is a design pattern that has become popular in the test automation for enhancing what test maintenance and second reducing the code duplication if you go and check uh, the selenium documentation itself so you just search for selenium page object model we get this link okay so this is the page like this is the official documentation given by the selenium team so what do they say about the page object model so page object is a design pattern that has become popular in test automation for enhancing test maintenance and reducing code duplication okay one thing i want to say uh, say here guys like if you have if you are looking for some resource suppose if you are working with test ng and if you are looking for something so always prefer the official documentation which is given by the team okay if you're looking for something from the extent reports something from test ng something for selenium okay go and first check in the official documentation if you are able to understand from there then it would be very good okay now coming to the uh, second part like we are saying like yeah what is page object model okay so why are we implementing this design pattern why are we using this so we are basically using this for the web applications like uh, uh, we have a web application and we are supposed to develop a test automation framework for that okay so what are web applications has obviously web applications have the web pages right so what is a web page a web page or a web page like a web page is a document basically which is commonly written in the html that is viewed in an internet browser it can be accessed by entering a url address into a browser's address bar now what does it mean you see we have the chrome browser open this is nothing but the internet browser okay now if you open a tab if you just type flipkart.com okay so this is basically uh, the url address of the flipkart application so we are able to access this application see we have clearly written here it can be accessed by entering the url address into a browser's address bar this is the browser uh, address bar and this is the url for this application now when we have requested this from the browser chrome so we are able to see uh, the ui of the application okay it's basically a web page which has a different components okay you see it has a header we have some options like login become a seller more card flipkart x plus and we have this text box which is showing us uh, uh, the auto like which is, which is working as a auto suggested drop down if you type here mob you see you're getting all the options as a mobile starting from mobile starting from mob basically okay if you just scroll down here this is the footer section okay so if you come next so what does a web page contains basically so web page can have n number of components what are those components that can be a header that can be a footer basically that can be a side panel if you want to take the example for the side panel if you go and check for the amazon.in application and if you click on this you see this is something which you can consider for the side panel okay this is not a completely web new web page basically guys this is one of the component which is present over a web page okay this is one component this header is one component okay so a web page can have n number of components basically okay and what does that component contains what does that mean so component is something which can have n number of web elements so what are those web elements what can be those it could be a text box it could be a button it could be a link it could be a drop down radio button checkbox or any image 
suppose if you just check here when i say that yeah this is the header of the application of the amazon application you see if you are just doing a mouse over operation here you are getting this pop up there where you can see these are all are the links okay this is these are the headings this is something which you can consider as a button okay this is the text box so basically what are these the, these all are considered as a web elements which are present on the web page okay now and what are different operations you can perform over the web elements like uh, most of the time when we are working with the web application we are doing the click operation we are sometimes we are doing double click we may click like we may go for the right click we may do the mouse over operation or we may do the send kiss send kiss is nothing but uh, this is the text box given here right so if i am providing any value here suppose laptop okay so this is the text box and uh, i'm i've just given some input to this on the basis of that input amazon application has given me the results okay and the other operation like drag and drop as well you can do there are other operations i have not listed down here but yeah these are the some of the examples which you can do now coming to the why to page like what are the advantages of page object model why should we use page object model guys so basically what happens when we implement this page object model in the web automation framework so it becomes and we can say like easy maintenance okay uh, the second is code reusability so what happens for example, suppose if you have written an xpath or if you have written an locator basically there are multiple locator strategies when you are working with selenium right we have xpath we have, we have select css selector we have link text we have partial link text we have other ways also okay now suppose if you have written an xpath for this particular text box okay so at only one place in your test automation framework at only one place when you are working with java in one class only in one java class you are going to put this locator like how exactly do you want to locate this text box now suppose if you go and inspect this text box okay fortunately this is a input tag okay this whole stuff is an html code this has a id now see this is a input tag basically okay and this id is nothing but an attribute and the value for that attribute is this one two tab search text box okay so you can create your relative xpath you can go with your custom xpath like you can use some xpath functions like text we have something called normalize space okay and uh, by any way if you are searching for the element you can search now suppose your application or your product is in the development stage and now what happens like the developer has made some, made some changes over this id okay so by using the page object model in your framework what is what will be the benefit you are getting you should only go at one place and change the locator for that element now it doesn't matter like that particular locator that particular element you have used in hundreds of test cases so it is going to take that locator it is going to take it is going to find that element from that one place only okay again the third benefit of that is readability and reliability of the scripts also it will be considered as the object repository is independent of the test cases okay uh, in the later like in the next slides i have a screenshot such as like if you are working with selenium web driver api and java as a programming language so how will it, it how will it look like okay so how to implement page object model basically if you are working with java so what happens like each page the web it is i was speaking about the page like basically is a web page so each page is represented by a class means one web page one java class okay so what that class is going to have it is going to have two things first the ui element definitions what does it mean it means that how are you actually finding that web element okay either with the help of xpath or css selector or partial link text or link text or tag name okay second is for the method for user actions now this is something related to like what is the operation what is the user action you are going to perform on that web element are you going to click on it or is it a text if it, if it is a text box then if something is there whether you want to put provide any value over there or if you want to do the mouse over like these are all the operations basically okay so when we create the project we create the pa separate package basically which we can name as web pages okay we should uh, put this pages package inside the src main java 
not in the src test java because src test java is something where you have to put where you have to keep all your test cases not the pages okay so basically you see uh, like these all are the pages we have like the cart page checkout page home page store page so in your application you may have the different web pages right so likewise we have to go and you see uh, the component stuff okay this component is something which is which will be common to every page okay maybe your application has 10 web pages okay but there are some components which are common to that when i say the components are same okay it can be header it can be footer it can be side panel it can be panel okay so you are not going to write the test you are not going to define those elements which are present inside header and footer every time in the web page in the page class okay you have to create some package like components and under that components you specify all those elements like uh, if you have named it as my header okay so header is going to have all these elements and wherever in any of the test case for any validation for any functionality test you can call these classes and you can access those web elements and whatever operations you want to perform you can go okay so basically see this is the ui when you are working with selenium web driver api and java okay so how are we going for example uh, we have a login page or a sign in page where we have two text boxes one is for email and second is for the password okay so in this example i am actually looking for these web elements the text box email with the help of id also with the password with the id okay then there is a button called sign in for which i am using the xpath this is one of the locator strategy so in the x i have written, i have written the relative xpath basically to find the uh, to find this button okay and you, now you see like all these elements all these web elements are marked as a private this private is something called an access modifier or the specifier in java okay now all these uh, text box email text box password and button sign in what you can call them as you can call them as data members or properties or variables as well okay now coming to the operations like yeah yes rajat we have found the text box email with the help of some id okay but we want to fill the value we want to fill the email address basically inside this text box right so how are we going to do that okay so basically what are we going to do that uh, for that we are going to create this method in the same java class only okay for example this is a sign in page a java class okay so first of all what we have done we have defined our web elements how are we finding our web elements and the second thing is what operation we want to perform over that element so email is a text box right so we are not just going to click on the text box correct so if we have a text box we are supposed to provide some value we are supposed to give some input to the text box so we are providing the email address and password and then we are clicking on the sign in button okay also one more thing suppose if you have number of text boxes on your web page on any one web page maybe uh, if you can consider like if there is a sign up page okay and if there are a number of fields there are for example if there are 8 to 9 text boxes okay so it would be good for you it it is recommended that you name these variables in such a way that by just re by just reading them reading the names you will be able to understand like what exactly this web element is now you see i am clearly mentioning here like text box email so this element this variable is for the text box basically and it just represents the email text box okay same is similar is the case with the methods name as well so when you are filling some data so you can use this prefix like to fill text box email fill text box password okay and click button sign in so by just reading the name of the method itself you are able to understand like yeah what this method is doing okay and all these methods all these operations we can call them as like methods then tasks behavior or the functionality okay now the screenshot from in the second side in the right hand side what exactly it is this is a test case screenshot okay where we have user annotation called test which is coming from test ng framework test login functionality is the method name okay the return type is void and we have used the public access modifier here so what are we doing here see we just creating an object of the sign in page the variable name we have taken as sign in page and we are passing the driver here okay now how are we going to use these methods which we have written in this class okay 
basically you see uh, with the method names i have used public as a access modifier right so when i have created the object of this sign in page class so with the object of this class i am able to access what only those methods which are marked as public i will not be like i won't be able to access these uh, properties or variables or data members because they are marked as private they only will be accessible inside the class okay so this is how we can actually use and we can actually implement the page object model okay so that's all thank you so much for your time thank you that's all for this session if you have any queries or anything to ask feel free to ask in the comment section or you can reach out to me via any of these platforms if you find this video useful please share it with your friends thank you for your time have a very good day